Okay, Carl, you want to go first? Okay. Thank you. My name is Carl Walker. I'm a senior tax analyst for Texas Taxpayers and Research Association. Property tax is the least desirable of all taxes because it is a direct tax on something that will make Texans better off, and that's capital investment. Capital investment brings innovation and economic growth that creates jobs, raises personal income, and improves quality of life. The tax relief package passed by the 88th legislature reduced school property taxes by $4.1 billion in 2023, and for that we commend and thank the legislature. However, the relief package also shifted the school property tax burden in Texas from homes to business. Single family homes received 86% of the 2023 property tax relief and realized $3.55 billion in relief across the state. All other property, mostly business property, received only 14% of the relief or $600 million. The property tax relief is funded by state revenue uh, from taxes paid primarily by businesses at 57.8%. So in other words, businesses paid the majority of the tax revenue used to offset taxes for homeowners in 2023. This burden shift is now structural. The $100,000 homestead exemption is required by the Constitution. In 2023, 43% of homestead property value and 93% of business property value was on the school property tax roll. The only source of revenue to fund current and future property tax relief is general revenue, which is paid primarily by business. This is a setback for attracting the capital investment that the state wants. To continue to attract capital investment and benefits it will bring to the state, we submit that future property tax reduction should not exacerbate the burden shift and instead should begin to re reverse it. Additional compression would benefit all property owners in proportion to taxable value and would not exacerbate the shift of the tax burden. However, for additional com compression to reach all school districts, the legislature will have to buy down the equity ban that has been discussed. Exemption of, pers of business personal property at some level would partially reverse the shift of the tax burden. In 2023 dollars, the cost of exempting business personal property from school district property tax and a hold harmless would be $3.4 billion per year. But increasing the homestead exemption would exacerbate the shift of the tax burden. And with the $100,000 homestead exemption, the proper relationship between personal income and property tax levies has already been achieved. I'd like to uh, kind of point you to uh, page 12, figure six of our uh, written testimony that we submitted and, and this chart right here. Um, so in 2020, property tax, and this is a relationship of personal income and property tax le levies going all the way back to 1994 and the relationship between the two. In 2020, property tax levies had increased by 68% and personal income had increased by 55% compared in 1994 adjusted for population and inflation. In 2023, the school property tax relief inverted that relationship. In 2023, property tax levies had increased 48% and personal income had increased by 57% when compared to 1994 adjusted for population and infl inflation. So we contend that the proper relationship between personal income and property tax levies has been achieved through this relief. For property tax relief that will stand the test of time, we need to shift the attention from appraisals to tax rates. Appraisal caps and exemptions merely shift the property tax from some taxpayers to other taxpayers. The only way to actually keep property tax in check is to keep local government spending in check which in turn keeps tax rates and property tax levies in check. We need more measures like the 3.5% uh, growth trigger enacted in 2019. So shifting a little bit to the uh, circuit breaker. Although the 20% circuit breaker pilot program will limit the taxable values of some business property, an appraisal cap such as the circuit breaker will only shift part of the tax burden from cap properties to non-cap properties and homesteads. The Tatera Research Foundation, in partnership with the Baker Institute for Public Policy, is studying the operation of the circuit breaker for in 2024. 
and we will report our findings to the legislature during the regular session. Our findings will include how much of the property tax burden was shift, shifted from capped to non-capped properties in five counties around the state. Those five counties are going to be Collin, Moore, Smith, Midland, and Harris that we are looking at. We're going to look at which properties paid less tax because of the circuit breaker. And we're also going to look at which properties paid more tax because of the circuit breaker. And then we're also going to run the scenario not just at the 20% that the circuit breaker is currently at, but at 10, 15, and 5 as well so we can see what the effects of, of what lowering it would be and whether or not this is something that we need to continue um, looking at. So finally, uh, I want to touch on eliminating M&O property taxes uh, for school districts. Eliminating the property tax would require a substantially higher sales tax rate than we currently have. Um, just to kind of go all the way to the top to replace all property tax, the total sales tax rate would have to be at least 19.27%. That's the current 6.25, a new 11.02, .02, and the current 2% local. Um, but to account for tax avoidance that would occur, like going across state lines to make very large purchases, that tax rate would have to be closer to 22%. To replace only school M&O taxes is at least 12.25, a current at 6.25 for the state, a new 4% state, and a current 2%, and would only eliminate 35% of the property taxes in Texas. For reference, the highest state and local sales tax rate in the U.S. is Tennessee at 9.548%. So any one of these scenarios would put us well in first place, which is not a first place I think we want. But I'll leave you with this final thought. Capital investment grows the tax base. If local government spending is kept in check, a larger tax base will yield permanent property tax reductions for all taxpayers. We ask you to focus on ways to engage property owners on local government spending in the tax rate uh, setting process. And we at Tara stand ready to help shift that focus. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions? Chairman Turner. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Um, Y'all put out a research report in August, very recent, on the powers and limitations of the Appraisal District Board of Directors. Yes. You're familiar with that? Oh, yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> I know, you know, people have different areas of expertise, so I want to be able to make sure you, you can speak to it if I can just ask you a couple questions. And I appreciate, Mr. Chairman, I, and Madam Chair, I appreciate the committee's indulgence. This will be my last Tarrant County specific <laughs> thing, but I do I do think this is, this is important because it, it is, I think, you know, potentially really a problem for the whole state. Uh, ultimately, so in the, in your guide that you put out last month, um, you say an appraisal plan that promotes anything other than equal and uniform taxation will create additional expense for the appraisal district in administering the in administering the ARB process, um, and and kind of repeatedly emphasize that the the purpose of the the appraisal district is to ensure equal and uniform valuation and right. taxation. I mean, that's that's what they're there for, right? Right. Okay. To value everything at market value. Okay. So running for the appraisal board and saying, I'm running to cut property taxes, that's not the purpose of the appraisal district, right? No, that is not the purpose of the appraisal district at all. In fact, uh, any property tax relief, whenever you're talking about local property tax relief, should be completely out of the appraisal process. It, it is solely with those local jurisdictions and getting involved Taxpayers need to learn to get involved with those uh, county commissioners and city governments, school boards, and, and, and put their say in there. And I think we have far too long put more focus on, on the appraisal as raising your taxes rather than what's happening at the local government level. Now, the local government level is a very hard conversation to have because we all believe that there is a fundamental level of government that needs to be there. And that's a tough argument to have, and that's different across mm -hmm. the large state like Texas. Sure. But it should be focused more over there. And right now we put so much effort into the appraisal. Whenever you open up your appraisal notice, there's three, four legal-sized documents that you look at. But now identifying a hearing or a tax rate hearing 
there, there's little to know. We used to have the postcard, which was mostly thrown away as junk mail. So yeah. we need to put more focus over to that other side. Yep. I, I, this well stated. I would, I would add the state legislature as well, since we control the school finance system, which, yep. of course, has tremendous property tax implications. So picking up on the conversation I had um, with the last witness, with Brent, um, this potential conflict between 2301 and 2518. So you, so your organization, if I'm reading this right, actually does not believe there's a conflict. Uh, you say that 2301 requires that it does not expressly state that property must be appraised each January 1st. Each is implied because the property tax is imposed each year. If property is not appraised at market value on January 1st of a given year, property will not be taxed in proportion to, to value in that year, which would violate Article 8, Section 1B mm -hmm. of the Constitution. Uh, so, so you call for an appraisal each year right. to, to maintain fidelity to the Constitution. And, and I've had conversation with Brent and, and yeah. TAAD on this because we also believe that there should be some generally accepted practices that are kind of put in place and that we need more clarity around that once every three years. And I believe the data that I got was something around 70% of appraisal districts actually appraise every year. Mm -hmm. And then 70% of them, of them um, actually put boots on the ground to go inspect the property. So we kind of believe oh. that we need to kind of look at what is generally accepted across the state on those appraisal plans and maybe not call it a reappraisal plan, but call it an appraisal plan and, and get further clarification as to what that once every three years is and put it as more of a standardized process that is practiced throughout the state. Okay. And you go on to say that section 25.18 cannot be read to permit the reappraisal of property only every three years. So this section requires a list of reappraisal activities to be conducted at least every three years, but does not state that appraisals or even reappraisals may be conducted only three year, every three years. All right. Okay. So you so going specifically to the Tarrant County situation where they're going to every other year, but in reality this first time it's going to be three years because right. of the way the dates fall. You don't think that's permissible? Well, what we'd like to well, if the market has moved. They, they have to abide by that market standard. So if, if under mass appraisal, you know, they're, they're still looking at ratios and everything, but then they still need to go out and inspect the property to make sure they are making appropriate adjustments if individual areas are needed. And that's what needs to be looked at as more of a recurring, but an appraisal every year. That's that's sure. what that's what we kind of stand by. Putting another way, just freezing people's yeah, appraisal freezing. for two years is not, not okay. No, it's not. Okay. No, that's what no, no we, we do not believe in freezing uh, yeah. appraisals every... Okay. And, and with respect to the 5% threshold that they're also imposing? That they, they still have to abide by, by market value and putting in a, even an appraisal. Like right now, the appraisal caps that are in statute, that's the taxable value. This one is to market value, which is in, directly goes against that they are valuing at market value on January 1 of each year. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, members. Any questions?